the time is right. Um, Barack Obama is greatly to be congratulated for laying the groundwork with the American voting population and getting a mandate to talk to the to the Russians particularly, but to, to all the nuclear nations, about cutting nuclear weapons severely and hopefully eventually going to zero. He made perfectly clear during his campaign that one of the things that he was going to do was to negotiate with the Russians on nuclear weapons. And he got acceptance for that. He got huge numbers of people all over the country behind him on that. He got opinion polls which showed that people wanted that. And therefore he's got he's going into those negotiations very much stronger because he can he doesn't have to risk an election where he might get chucked out because he hasn't prepared the ground properly. He took the trouble to explain to people what he was doing and why. Um, I think there are a number of steps that can be taken and many people have said this, that really uh, can be taken without any risk whatsoever. And those are things like taking nuclear weapons on both sides off hair trigger alert. It's so completely absurd in this day and age that the nuclear weapons of America and Russia should be pointed at each other and be on such a system whereby if um, an incoming radar system indicates missiles in flight, our missiles will be fired automatically. I think some of the myths need to be exploded and for that we need the help of the media. It's a long time now since any really good documentaries or even feature films have been made that deal with the nuclear issue. Um, what, what we need to see uh, is the explosion of the myth that nuclear weapons can be used or that they are useful against any of the enemies that we face now. You cannot use a nuclear weapon against a terrorist. It's, it's perfectly fatuous and that needs to be shown. We need to blow apart the myth that nuclear weapons are safe. They are not safe. We need to have a, a program that documents all the nuclear warheads that have gone missing, that have never been found, and all the fissile material, the uranium and plutonium, that is unaccounted for. So that people just realise what um, a toxic uh, path this is to take to continue with nuclear weapons. The nuclear issue is, uh, is key to peace building of all kinds for the following reason that the possession of nuclear weapons has become, over time, a reason for having a seat on the Security Council, a permanent seat on the Security Council of the UN. And this perpetuates a hierarchical system, a global hierarchical system, which is detrimental to everybody. The rest of the planet is what we call flattening out. It's becoming a much more horizontal organisation. What everybody wants, or everybody under 30 at the very least, is uh, a much more even communication between people at an equal level. And therefore, the existence of things like permanent seats, the permanent five of the Security Council, its days are numbered. And the sooner they give it up, the better. The other reason is the vast amounts of money that are soaked up by nuclear weapons. Uh, I mean, the, the figures are just obscene. That Britain is thinking of spending 80 billion pounds on renewing the Trident system, actually rebuilding a totally new system, when if you just think of what 80 billion pounds could do to prevent and resolve the kind of conflicts that are killing and continue to kill hundreds of thousands, even millions of people worldwide. In the Congo, five and a half million people, five and a half million people, that's almost as many as were killed in the Holocaust in the Second World War, have died as a result of the war going on in the Congo over the last 10 years. Those are unnecessary deaths. Most of the children who die before their fifth birthday are in conflict areas. 
That means that hundreds of thousands of children are dying every year as a result of conflict, which could so easily be prevented if these obscene amounts of money weren't spent on nuclear weapons and re-diverted to the prevention of conflict through non-violent means. There are now uh, people trained and identifiable in all conflict countries of the world who are ready and willing to get underway with this work, but they've got no money, there's no, there's no funds behind them. These are people like Henri Burialadi in the Congo, who's managed to negotiate with local militias, he's managed to stop towns being under siege, he's managed to get young men in the militia back into paid work, and he's managed to get hostages released. Now that's just one man working with a budget of £10,000 a year. Just imagine if you had even a million pounds available to enable people like Ori to do their work. But most of them give up because they haven't got the funds. So my heart just breaks when I think of the obscenity of making uranium and plutonium to blow up huge cities and countries when a fraction of that money would enable the stopping of a conflict like the Congo. What's happening now is more hopeful, I think, in the sense that there is such a tide of waking up going on throughout the world where ordinary people are realising that they have some power to do something. And they are getting busy on the internet, they're signing up to organisations like Avaz and Move On. They're bringing about change through humour, through mockery, um, through exposure of um, uh, of corruption and so forth and so the power of ordinary people is I would say growing very fast hand in hand with what I would not hesitate to call a spiritual awakening now I don't mean religion but I mean that more and more people are realizing that they are connected that what Einstein said long ago is that we are all one that the atoms that compose my body are indistinguishable from the atoms that are around in the world and that what I do and what, even what I think affects other people and more and more people are waking up to this and it has huge consequences for politics because if I know that I'm connected to you or to an Iranian or to a Mujahideen and that they are indistinguishable from me not to mention a tree or a fish in the ocean, then I'm going to be much more careful about what I do, what I say, and much more beneficially inclined. My heart is going to work harder, do more, and my head hopefully come more in balance with my heart. <laughs>